car in. They were buying tickets. The line was out the door, down the street, as the Thunderbolts look to be a dark horse in Group 5. It all st starts tonight. And Millville approaches, and it's a low kick, and it bounces all the way through, and it's going to bounce to about the 5-yard line. It's picked up at the 5, crossing over to the 10-yard line, and still on his feet is Marquise Little for Williamstown, and that's where they'll start short of the 20-yard line. Yeah, a little confusion. Number one, you always want to stop the ball when you get those grounders. You don't want to fool around just kind of like an infielder, stop the ball and then pick it up. Had a little trouble with it and ended up getting them a little trouble. And they'll line up, uh, as Mike pointed out, on about the 16-yard line. Yeah, first and 10 at the 16-yard line is where the Braves, who will run the football a lot, Doug Banks is the quarterback for Williamstown. Sends a man in motion to the near side of the field. They pitch it to the motion man, and down he goes immediately. Eric Cooney carried the football, but a big play there by the linebacker, Kevon Rivera. Yeah, Rivera really did a nice job of kind of getting underneath the, the uh, blocker and making that tackle. Second and 12, a loss of two, ball at the 14-yard line. Mike Hill and Jim Schaefer on a beautiful November night. We usually do these playoff games, Jim, and it is very cold. Weather should not be a factor in the football game tonight. Banks under center, Chamberlain in the backfield. Sends a man in motion, and the hand goes off of the left tackle. Not much going there, and it'll bring up a third and long. So far, going according to book, both teams running the ball, and that's what they do. Millville is very much prepared. They operate out of a four-man line and overload on the power side. So Chamberlain, he's one of their main ball carriers. John Chamberlain, a senior, the fullback. Second or third and 11 now as they break the huddle. They do not throw the football all that often. Receivers to the near side, Mark Ellis. Banks under center, a man in motion. Play action. Banks to throw into the flat, and it's incomplete. Intended for Eric Cooney, and the Braves will punt back deep for Millville is Robert Ennis, and he'll stand around his own 40-yard line. And he's a legitimate player. He goes ab about 5'10", about 185 pounds, although the uh, score card says 165. I'm talking to their people. <laughs> he's bigger than that. Fourth and 11, ball at the 15. A big opportunity for Millville. Ennis works back deep to punt. And it's a nice snap and a nice kick. High, very high, end over end punt. Bounces at the 45, takes a Millville bounce, and it's touched up by Cooney. And Millville will start in enemy territory with first and 10 ball at the Williamstown 43-yard line. 10-24 uh, left to play first quarter. Boy, you can't ask for better field position. And Ennis was really giving a lot of respect to that punter. He was about 45 yards deep. I'm sure the next time he'll move up a little bit. It looks like Bill Bendig actually was the punter, one of their offensive linemen. He's also the defensive end lined up on the near side. Sends a man in motion, Millville, they hand it to Armstead on the first carry of the game, and he gets near first down yardage, crosses to 35, and it will be a first down, pickup of 10 on the play, ball at the 32, so Raquel Armstead takes the handoff. Roberto Rivera is the quarterback. That's a dynamic duo in that backfield with Armstead, <coughs> excuse me, and Ennis. We'll let you know where those guys are lined up frequently. Ennis in the backfield, and he takes it off right tackle. Good penetration. Ennis bounces to the outside. He's still on his feet, but he has out of bounds, short of the line of scrimmage. I think he lost a yard. It'll be second and 11. Good, uh, well defense by Williamstown as they just kept spreading it out until he had no room to uh, move at all, and it's going to be about a, it could be about a five-yard loss. Second and 11, ball at the 34-yard line with under 10 minutes to play here in the first quarter. Just underway at Wheaton Field. Rivera under center. Rivera sends Armstead in motion. He fakes it to Armstead, then he gives it to Ennis up the middle and he falls down. 
Ennis falls down after a nice pickup, but it looked like there was more yards to be had, but he just slipped and fell. Yeah, he made a little move there to uh, get past one tackle and didn't quite get his feet under him until he went down. So it's going to be third down, but this is definitely four down territory for uh, Millville. Third and five at the 27-yard line, 934 in counting. Over on our sister station, 1450, Tony Blum and former Eagle Barrett Brooks have the call of Atlantic City and Eastern. Rivera under center. Ennis in the backfield. They hand to Ennis off right tackle. He's got a burst, and he is going to get pushed out of bounds. Boy, he hit that corner pretty fast and then got met easily by... Marquise Little, who made a great play from the safety spot, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Boy, it did look like he had plenty of room, as Mike called that. They had crowded the line of scrimmage, looking for something up the middle, and it's broke it to the side, but they reacted very, very well. So fourth and one at the 23-yard line. Don't forget live video of this game at 973ESPN.com. Watch HD video, thanks to Matt Omer from Omer's Appliances in Ocean City. Rivera under center. He sends a man in motion, Armstead. He hands it to Armstead, who sweeps off the near side. He has a first down and more. Crosses the 15-yard line and a pickup of about nine on the play. It's a Millville first down. And it's almost like he comes out of the slide on a little motion handoff, a quick handoff, and he just continues to run. Ran off the left tackle, broke it up, and the Millville crowd comes alive when these two running backs get out in the open because they know they're a bundle to get down. Well, they sweep to Armstead there. Now they go into a shotgun formation with four wide receivers. Three bunch to the near side, and Rivera's going to take it himself up the middle. He carries it up to about the five-yard line, so a gain of about seven. First uh, second down and two, ball at the four-yard line for Millville. And Millville showing that they not only have Armstrong and Ennis, but Rivera, quite a capable runner, as he just lowered those shoulders and plowed straight ahead for about six yards. A lot of people think this is the dark horse in Group 4. Their two losses this year were close matchups with St. Joe's and Holy Spirit in a game you heard on 97-3. ESPN. Rivera hands to Ennis. Ennis bounces to the outside at the five. He crosses into the end zone for a Thunderbolts touchdown. A two-yard touchdown run for Rob Ennis with 7.42 left to play here in the first quarter. It is 6 nothing. Millville just like that. And a simple, we're going to run the ball right down your throat. They went 42 yards and didn't put the, all in the air, ball in the air, coach. Yeah, and that's what you're going to expect from them. They do have a, a good kicker as he lines up for uh, the extra point here. The Boardwalk Hot and Game of the Week is produced by Prime Events on 97.3 ESPN. Brian Brumell and his professional staff are waiting to serve you at Boardwalk Honda, Tilton Road in Egg Harbor Township. The kick is up and it is good with the score. Millville 7, Williamstown nothing. This is high school football night on 97.3 ESPN and 97.3 ESPN. Com. Boardwalk Honda invites you to check out their always up-to-date online inventory ideal for doing research from the comfort of your home or office. When you found the Honda models you like, visit Boardwalk Honda, 6807 Tilton Road, Egg Arbor Township, and take a test drive. The service you'll receive is a cut above, and Brian Rommel's sales staff is professional, yet highly approachable. You'll quickly understand why Boardwalk Honda has such an expansive base of loyal customers. Boardwalk Honda, call toll-free, 877 64 99. Mike Gill, Jim Schaefer, impressive drive, coach. Yeah, no doubt about it. And and they just have a lot of weapons, and they use them well. They they uh, If Ennis is in the deep back spot, Armstrong is flanked and vice versa. So 7.42 in the first quarter. Millville on the board first. And the kick taken by Little. At the 15, crosses the 20, out to the 25, to the 30, the 35. He breaks to the near side at the 40, 45, 50. Little at the 40, the 30. And he is in for a brave score. Make it 85 yards for a Williamstown touchdown. And just like that, Williamstown answers. Well, I tell you, he showed good speed. I'm thinking to myself, he's, he... Got the ball almost on a little outside of the right hash mark. Went all the way across the field. And you're thinking, geez, cunt, punt, or kickoff returners are supposed to go north-south. Well, he was fast enough to come back all the way to the right side. And as Mike pointed out, no one was able to catch up to him. 
they must have had a return to that side set up because he made a point to run to the far side and then cut it back to the near side. On for the extra point as the kick is up, and it hits the upright, and it's no good. So the kick is no good. It makes it 7-6, Millville. Millville in the lead. The Boardwalk Honda Game of the Week is produced by Prime Events on 97.3 ESPN. Brian Brumell and his professional staff are waiting to serve you at Boardwalk Honda on Tilton Road in EHT. Under the Flood Insurance Reform Act of 2012, you could save more than 90000 over 10 years if you build three feet above base flood elevation. The all-star staff at Baumgartner House Lifting can attend to all your house raising needs. The Baumgartner family has 65 years of combined experience in general construction. Visit BaumgartnerHouseLifting.com or call toll-free 855-324-2700. Baumgartner House Lifting, restoring the Jersey Shore one home at a time. Shore True Value Hardware, Summers Point, hopes that you'll continue to shop locally. They offer friendly service and expert advice. At Shore Hardware, they'll do anything to help. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 7, Saturdays until 6, Sundays 8 to 4. Help is just around the corner at Shore True Value Hardware, 515 New Road, Summers Point, 609-927-6464. Visit them online at shorehardware.com. So Williamstown answers. They missed the extra point. It's 7-6 with 7.27 to go. A low kick. It's on the ground. Hit at the 30 and dropping down on top of the football to pick it up. Right there on the spot at the 30-yard line is Millville. So that's where they'll start. First and 10, ball at the 29-yard line. They'll move right to left. A little different field position than they had the first time. They had a short field. They actually got it in Williamstown territory on their 43-yard line and proceeded to drive it in. They're now starting on their 29. Let's see how they handle that. First and 10, Rivera breaks the huddle. He's got a eye formation in the backfield with Ennis as the deep back. They hand it to Ennis. Ennis bounces to the inside. Actually, Armstead. Armstead to the near side. He bounces to the outside at the 40. Stutter steps, crosses back, and then he goes down at about the 44-yard line. So a first down and more. So Armstead has kind of uh, got some spotlight the last couple of weeks, and this time they feature him as the lead back. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing uh, the versatility these two backs show. But uh, that time, Williamstown stacked the line of scrimmage once again, had seven men in the block right up crowding the line of scrimmage, but they're able to use that speed to get outside. First and 10 at the 45. Shotgun for Rivera. Now he's going to hand it off. No, he's going to keep it himself. Rivera off the right guard and minimal gain on the play. Putting up second down, ball at the 50-yard line, second and five. And just to bring up a point about Armstead, you know, he kind of came on the scenes when Ennis got hurt, but since then has been averaging 12 uh, yards a carry. Not bad. Breaking the huddle on second and five. With a shotgun formation. Ennis and Armstead in the backfield. They hand it to Ennis, who goes to the far side, crosses the 45-yard line, gets a first down, and tackled there shortly after, but a pickup of seven. Nothing fancy by Millville. They are just handing the ball off, and Armstead and Ennis are beating people around the corner. It looks like Williamstown is even keyed to uh, expect that type of a play, but they still outrun them. On the Atlantic City Electric scoreboard, Kingsway 7 and Lacey 3. We'll keep you up to date on all the scores from around the area on this playoff opening night. Right up the middle, the handoff goes to Ennis, and he's got nowhere to go, but he's got second and nine. Over on 14.50 tonight, we've got a score in that game. Top seeded Eastern 3 and Atlantic City nothing. So a field goal, the Vikings held the Vikings to three. And everybody, uh, other than the people from the eastern part of South Jersey, feels Eastern is the team to beat. They are the top seed. They did beat Williamstown in a game you heard on 97-3 earlier this year, but that was a game in rain, a driving rainstorm that night. We've got a beautiful night here, second and eight, ball at the 40. Rivera in shotgun, back to throw, looking over the middle, fires, and it's complete. Complete at the 35, at the 30, and to the 28-yard line, 
out in the flat catching the pass is Edward Shockley, one of the top linebackers in the area there, showing his worth as a receiver. Yeah, he, he's <coughs> a lot of these Millville players play both ways, and Shockley is one of them. He's a great linebacker, kind of leader of the defense and offensively plays tight end and has very good hands. On the Atlantic City Electric scoreboard, Bridgeton leads Cinnaminson 6-3. to three. That's an interesting matchup as well, a 3-6 matchup. Rivera under centers, fakes to Armstead, gives to Ennis, who jukes, gets to the outside at the 25-10-5 touchdown, Millville. So... And he made a, if I could make a comparison, a LaShawn McCoy move right at the line of scrimmage where he jump stopped and then just with a burst was into the end zone. So Boy. 29 yards out. You're right. And he just, he kind of stopped on a dime and then restarted himself and cut it right up to, from between the center up to the guard. And just like that, it's another Millville touchdown. The kick is up and it is good. So with 4.57 left to play here in the first quarter, Millville 14, Williamstown 6. This is high school football night on 97.3 ESPN. The Storage Inn, a friendly family-owned business, started more than three decades ago. They're at 2527 Fire Road in Egg Harbor Township. The Storage Inn has over 40 different sizes to meet all your storage needs, both personal and commercial. Storage Inn, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Security, 609-646-6400. Storage Inn, also located in Ocean City, or visit storageinn.net. Their managers are on site to assist you. The storage in of EHD and Ocean City. 14 to 6, so explosive offense from Millville so far. Ken Williams down, keep up. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. And uh, both teams showing speed. Little showed a lot of speed on that kickoff return. And Ennis and Armstrong, of course, both have excellent speed. Another bouncing kick picked up by Chamberlain, and Chamberlain crosses the 25, and he looked like he had some space, and then he gets tackled short of the 30, so Williamstown will get the football back first and 10 at the 29. Good pursuit by Millville, because it did look like uh, he had room to move, but. Over on the Atlantic City scoreboard, Atlantic City's on the board. They return a kick for a touchdown. They lead. Six to three. So the Vikings of Atlantic City leading the Vikings of Eastern. That would be an upset. Eight first one. Handing the ball off. Little trying the outside and nowhere to go. It'll be second down. Now, great play on the part of uh, White, who's their big defensive end on, on the right side. He's headed to Penn State. So obviously a few people think he has a lot of talent. Second and 11. Ball at the 28-yard line, 425, a active first half. Yeah, and, and uh, just except for that one pass attempt, it's all on the ground. Banks under center, Chamberlain in the backfield. Sends a man in motion to the near side. They hand it to the motion man. Then they do a reverse to Little, and Marquise Little, it's sniffed out by Millville. Great play on the far side of the field there. And Shockley, one of the linebackers, involved in on the tackle. Well, with the great pursuit that Millville is showing, Williamstown tried to take advantage of that and ran a little double handoff, but Millville stayed at home and actually uh, enveloped the uh, running back. Third and nine, ball at the 31. Another passing situation for a team that doesn't like to throw. Banks in a shotgun, four wide receivers. Banks to throw, he steps up, he fires over the middle, it's way complete, Little's wide open, and he gets a big gain on the play, catches the football at about the 46 yard line, so a pickup of 15 on the play, first and 10, Williamstown. Rivera on the tackle, but boy, as Mike pointed out, he made a square in move, came across the middle, and was wide open in the zone that Millville was playing. First and 10 at the 46, Banks under center, Chamberlain in the backfield, four wides. They give the Chamberlain up the middle, he breaks a tackle, and now he falls forward short of the 50 yard line, he's gonna pick up about three. Yeah, good play by Stubbs uh, coming from that linebacker spot and closing the hole very quickly. Second and seven, ball short of the 50, 
at the 49-yard line, 2.45 and counting. First quarter, Mike Gill, Jim Schaefer, 97.3 ESPN, and Matt Ulmer with live video at 97.3 ESPN.com. You can watch this game right there. Banks under center, four wide receivers to throw. Gets it to Little in the slot. Little can't get back to the line of scrimmage, and if he did, it's going to still set up a third and seven. Yeah, Stubbs and Rivera just... It was just a little bubble pass to the right-hand side, but well defensed by uh, Millville. Yes, it was. Millville really did a good job of coming up on that one. Rykel Armstead also plays corner. He's one of the guys who sniffed that one out. So it's going to be third and six. They gave him a yard on the play for, Mil uh, for Williamstown, who breaks the huddle with under two minutes to play. They send Tyler Booth to the far side of the field. Banks under center. They send a man in motion, Little. They fake the pitch, and now the ball's on the ground. It's fumble, but Chamberlain fell back on top of it. It looked like a bad handoff exchange there, it, it, and they got lucky. It looked to me like a bad handoff, too. It looked like the running back was virtually past the quarterback, and he tried to force it in, and it was only a good play by him coming back and getting it that saved the turnover for, uh, for Wash uh, excuse me, Williamstown. The big fellas coming in to punt again. Yeah, I was watching him uh, before this uh, uh, Mark Wolf. He got a big, strong leg. This is Ennis standing back at around his 30, and Bending gets into one. High, short punt. It bounces at the 35. It rolls past the 30, and now rolls past the 25-yard line. So a Big bounce for Williamstown. A high but short punt takes a good roll, and Millville will start over at first and 10 back at the 23-yard line with under a minute to play here in the first quarter. And it's obvious Williamstown doesn't want to give those deep backs, either Ennis or Armstead, room to be able to run. First and 10. Under a minute to play, and Rivera's in a shotgun. And in the shotgun, he hands it off to Ennis. Ennis comes to the near side. Now he cuts it back right up the middle, and he goes forward for a gain of about five, maybe eight on the play. Boy, they gave him a good spot there as he was tackled on the play by Eric Cooney. Still no score in Hamilton, and Shawnee will keep up to date on that one. This could be the final play of the first quarter here. Second and one, he picked up nine. To a real good spot there because it looked like Ennis fell a little earlier. He scooted himself up on the ground a little bit. Rivera under center with Armstead, the single setback. They handle it to him, and he goes down almost immediately off right tackle, but he might have got enough for the first down. We'll see where they spot it, and that should be the final play of the first quarter. With the score, Millville 14, Williamstown 6. Here on 97.3 ESPN. Now the clock is stopped. Now they're going to start it back up. It stops on the placement of the first down. And Millville says, you know what? We'll take that. We'll take the lead. And we'll go down the other end of the field. The Boardwalk kind of game of the week is produced by Prime Events on 97.3 ESPN. Checks in at quarterback for Williamstown. A big loss at this stage of the season. And entering the game is number 16, Isaiah Perkins. He's a junior. 6'1", 180. And I saw him throwing in, in practice. He has a good arm. Perkins under center. And they pitch it. Pitch it to Chamberlain. Chamberlain to the far side. Crosses first down yardage and more. Chamberlain still on his feet up at around the 44-yard line. So he crosses the midfield stripe. He picks up a big gain of 13 on the play. Or excuse me, a 17 on the play. So a big gain on the play. And Washington finally brought him down, but it looks like a flag is bringing it back. Ooh, and Chamberlain finally broke out, and he's been their workhorse. You heard uh, he was a big part of their win last year in the Group 5 final against Atlantic City, who, by the way, last time we checked in on Atlantic City, they were winning tonight against Eastern. Boy, would that be an upset. Holding penalty against Williamstown brings it back, so instead of that big gain, they have uh, now second and about 20. Yeah, second and 18 officially ball at the 31. 940 and counting. Perkins under center. He hands it right back to the same play, and they give it to the far side to Joseph Early. And Early 
Picks up decent yards, but nowhere near the same yardage as Chamberlain, the prior play. It's going to be third down and 14, so a pickup of four on the play, and the ball's at the 35. Another passing situation for Williamstown. As we mentioned in pregame, neither of these teams really wants to put that ball up. So Perkins is just fresh into this game. He's going to have his first passing situation here. He's in a shotgun. Twins to the near side. Single setback in the backfield. Perkins rolls to the near side. He's going to throw. Perkins looking, and he just kind of flutters one out into the flat. Incomplete intended for Joe Early, and it will be a fourth down punting situation, and Millville should get good field position. And all your quarterbacks at home know that if you're sprinting out to your left and you're a right-handed quarterback, it's tough to get those shoulders square and to be able to throw it. And he uh, just had a very difficult time. Then in lobbing the ball, even if that was completed, it would not have been the first down. Back deep to receive the punt for Millville, standing at his 25-yard line is Rob Ennis. Bill Bendig in to punt. Good snap. Bendig takes a step and... Pops one high, and it is bouncing at the 30. Comes and takes a Millville bounce and touched up at the 35-yard line, and that's where the Thunderbolts will start with 8.42 left to play in the first half. And, you know, so far Millville has been very effective running the football here. Yeah, but they're still very even teams, I think. They both uh, defense the run fairly well. The problem I have with that Ennis uh, just letting that ball bounce that ball can take a, a crazy bounce and roll for another 20 yards. So I don't know why they're not fair catching that ball. Well, they ended up taking a Millville bounce. They got lucky there. First and 10 at the 35. They hand it off to Ennis to the near side. Ennis crops up to the 40. Ooh, he's tackled right before the 40. Nice play by Mark Ellis on Rob Ennis. And Mark Ennis kind of bumped them, and everybody got all excited after the last time uh, there was a little shuffling going on you know people think right away well uh, they're trying to start something again I really believe that was very accidental that bump <laughs> second and six ball at the 39 with 8 12 to play Millville leading 14 to 6 looking to add some more with Rivera in a shotgun Dominic Pinheiro to the near side, split wide. But they're going to keep it Rivera up himself. He gets a first down and more, crosses the 50-yard line. So a pickup of 12 on the keeper to the 48. So a big gain there by Roberto Rivera. Boy, great blocking on the offensive line. They just powered pushing the uh, Williamstown defensive lineman back. And Rivera just hung on their back and took it for all it was worth. First and 10 at the 48-yard line, 750 and counting to play here in the first half, a 14-6 Millville lead. Moving left to right. In the blue with the orange pants and the white helmets, Millville looking for more. And a man moved on the Williamstown. It's going to be a free play for Ennis. He gets the pitch, shuffles his feet, crosses over the 45, and picks up almost eight on the play. But a holding penalty against Millville will bring this one back. So they didn't call Bendig for crossing over. Usually in high school, when you go off sides, that ends the play there. <laughs> and the Millville people are wanting to know, hey, what about the guy who went off sides over here? <laughs> so it makes it, instead of a first down, it's going to be first and 16. First and 10 it would have been at the 40. It's now first and 16 back at the 40, their own 45. So a big change in field position there all of a sudden. 7-13 to play. Millville breaks the huddle with Rivera under center. Armstead as the wing back on the far side. He sends him in motion to the near side. They fake it to him. They roll out. Rivera looking. Now he's going to roll. Looking again. He pires, and it is incomplete. He throws it out of bounds on the Atlantic City Electric scoreboard. Bridgeton, 12-3, lead over Cinnaminson. And another flag on the play. Well, he was out of the pocket there, so you would think that, that he's okay in that. But Millville's clapping, and they like what they think that this penalty could be. Yeah, it's uh, roughing the passer on, on uh, Williamstown. And... I guess I'm not quite up on that rule. I would think that once he gets that far out, he's a running back. But I guess that's not the case. Oh, 
6.55 to play here in the first half, and it's Melville on top, 14-6. I think it's once he crosses the line he becomes the running back. I think if he's in well, the backfield. Well, that's obvious when he crosses the line. Right, but once he's in the backfield, he's still considered safe. Okay. 6.55. Now they move right back to virtually where they were before. And the officials wanting the, the chains on the far side of the field, the chain gang hasn't moved yet. So it will be. They're Millville fans. They were really into the game. <laughs> they had a good vantage point over there. They didn't <laughs> want to move from the first and 10 ball at the 40. They hand it off to Armstead. Armstead sidesteps a tackle, crosses up to about the 35-yard line. Be second down and seven. Pick up a three. Pete Halloran makes a stop there for Williamstown. He's one of the big guys in the middle of that line. Williamstown's a pretty big front front uh, part of their defensive line there. Yes, and they uh, the only time they really got blown off was that one play by Rivera. Uh, other than that, they're doing a pretty good job. Shotgun formation, second and seven. Ball at the 37-yard line. Rivera takes the snap. He Fakes a pitch, and he's going to keep it himself. Crosses the 30 up to the 20-yard line, and what a play by Rivera. I don't know if that was a called play or not, but he faked the pitch and said, I got some room to the near side here. I'm just going to take it. I agree. I mean, that was a very good run, and he showed some moves as he got downfield as he came, broke uh, a fake from the outside to cut back inside and make it inside the 20-yard line. First and Ted in the red zone now, as Jim mentioned, they're at the 19, inside the 20. Six minutes in county. Millville leads 14-6, looking for more. Rivera in a shotgun with Ennis to his right. Fakes it to Ennis. He's going to roll out. Looking, firing, and it is complete. Complete down to about the five-yard line. Chris Harris with the catch, and he gets out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. It looks like about the four. So he gets a couple extra yards after the catch there to make it first down. And goal, they're going to spot it at the six. So we got out of bounds right before the five-yard line. And he came from one side of the field all the way over. So Rivera is showing a lot of patience and waiting and waiting and waiting for him to clear till he finally uh, got it to him. First and goal at the six. They're going to pitch it to Armstead, who lowers the helmet and tries to push the pile forward. We'll see where they mark it. Looks to be about... Uh, Two yards short. Dylan Hammond made the stop there. So second and goal, ball at the two. 5-18 and counting. Two yards away from a two-score lead here. And Millville's in no hurry right now. They just want to bang it in. Ennis the single setback. They pitch it to Ennis, who gets a block from Armstead, cuts it up, and he is short of the goal line. Short of the goal line on the far side of the field. It'll be third down and goal, ball at the one. Boy, I tell you, I, I couldn't quite see who made that tackle, but he came flying across the field and stopped him cold. It looked like he was going to go in easily. More jawing, it looks like, as the officials... <laughs> are stepping in there. You see some of the Williamstown kids putting their palms up saying, hey, guys, you're going to help us out over here. <laughs> Third and goal, ball at the one. What do they dial here? The ball's on the far hash mark on the Williamstown side of the field. Millville breaks the huddle with a power eye look and Armstead the single setback. Armstead goes forward and he's in for a Millville touchdown. With 4.17 left to play here in the first half, Millville scores for the third time tonight. They lead it 20-6 to on the Boardwalk Honda Game of the Week produced by Prime Events on 97.3 ESPN. Check out their online inventory at boardwalkhonda.com. Dominic Pinheiro on to try the extra point. And the kick is up, and it is good. So three extra points for Pinheiro, and a three-touchdown advantage, or two-touchdown advantage for Millville. 
on their third touchdown of the night. They lead it 21 to 6. Just for wheels, full line. Eastern 17, Atlantic City 14. Mm. So AC hanging with them. Yeah, it's not over yet, that's for sure. 17 to 14. Tyler Donahue has the halftime show coming up in 417 from now. The kick goes through the end zone. It's a touchback, and Williamstown will start with the football at the 20 yard line. Jim Millville pulling away. Yeah, and it that short low line drive kick has worked very well for Millville. At uh, that one time, Little was able to make that big return, and they're very concerned about that. So they're not kicking it to him anymore. First Millville and 10. looks good, I think. They've looked very solid so far tonight. And you know, the last time we saw them against Holy Spirit, Steve Parker and I did that game. They were right in that game, and they looked good. They were physical. In fact, John Iannucci said after the game, what a physical game. He said, they just, we just both beat each other up. Millville's very big as Chamberlain takes the sweep to the outside. Nowhere to go, and Millville, their defense gets overlooked a lot because they have such star power on offense with Ennis and Armstead. And a lot of people don't talk about their defense, but their defense has been very physical. Yeah, and you got two uh, very, very good players in Shockley and uh, White to kind of anchor that. Then uh, their defensive backfield has great speed because Armstead and... Uh, and Ennis played defense. Second and eight, pickup of two, ball at the 22. Their own 22. So 78 yards of real estate in front of the Braves of Williamstown. They trail it 21 to seven with 3.38 to play in the first half. It looks like Perkins is still in at quarterback. Banks left the game with an injury. Perkins hands it off and it's running right there to make a huge play. I mean, no time to do anything and making the play for Millville is Kevon Rivera, and Kevon Rivera almost took the handoff himself. I mean, that's how quick it was. He was in the backfield so fast, you, you look at it and wonder, how did he get in there so quick? Because as the, uh, the quarterback was handing that off, he was there to pounce on him. Joe Early carried the football on third and 13 now at the 17-yard line. Perkins is in another throwing position. Back to throw, Perkins in a shotgun. He rolls out of the pocket, looking. And he's gonna get hit, and he's gonna get knocked out of bounds on the far side of the field, and flags come a-flying. It looks like Lotham hit him out of bounds. That's a tough play, Coach. I mean, he's running out of bounds. It's evident that the player hits him. I think he hit him before he went out of bounds, but because he knocked him out of bounds, it seems like they're trying to protect the kids. Yeah, they, there's no doubt about that, but it isn't a penalty at all if he's inbound. So they had to uh, think that he was out of bounds when he was hit. Yeah, he, but from my vantage point, it looked like he was inbounds and got knocked out of bounds. Not, needless to say, protection is big. And he wasn't getting a first down on that no, play. No, but so. that gives him a first down. So it's first and 10, ball at their own 36. A huge turn of events here because they would have had a punt. Perkins sends a man in motion to the near far side of the field. They pitch it to Chamberlain. Chamberlain cuts it upfield. Short yardage on the play. Crosses the 40-yard line. He picks up about three or four with two and a half minutes to play in the half. And you can tell Chamberlain's a good runner. He gets out there in that wing, squares his so shoulders, and is getting every inch possible. Second and five. Pick up a five at the 41. Perkins in the game. Banks left with an injury at quarterback for Williamstown. They hand it off early. Early, nowhere to go. And a nice play on the far side of the field as Millville again, one of the guys in there helping out, Roberto Rivera. And, you know, that was a little counter play. But, again, Millville just holds their, uh, their slots, their gaps, and does a great job. And just when the runner gets there, they just knock his socks off. Third and five. Ball at the 41. This is a big third down with 141. Millville, they can get the ball back potentially here, and they will throw it. This is Perkins overlooking this blue and orange defense of Millville. Perkins. He's going to keep it and throw it. Rolling to the near side. Looking, looking. He's pressured, and down he goes. Down he goes, and there to get him for Millville again. It looks like Antoine White was in there along with Obi Kali making the sack. But White 
made Perkins run into back. Kelly. Exactly. Yeah, it's a great call. White uh, just outran him. Boy, he's got good speed for a big man, and he turned him back, and the sack was made. So fourth and 14 at their own 32 with 114, and we just talked about it now. Millville takes timeout because they can get the football back and a chance to put this game out of reach. The McMahon Agency of Ocean City Marmora Mays Landing is proud to sponsor broadcasts of Cape Atlantic League Sports to recognize the value of teamwork and the dedication to these outstanding student athletes. Specializing in home, business, auto, flood, boat insurance, the McMahon Agency is committed to supporting the community and offer real service and real value and real people right in their hometown. Reach them at 800-448-6340 or online at mcmahonagency.com. The McMahon Agency of Ocean City Marmora and Mays Landing. Sometimes there's no place like home like Wheaton Field, where Millville has a lead tonight. Almost blocked as it's a short kick yet again. It bounces short of the 40, uh, right over the 40-yard line, back to the 35. It took a Williamstown bounce, and Millville will have a minute five left to play here. So you have a 21 to six lead. Are you going to the air? You're being conservative. Uh, if I'm calling timeout to get the ball back, I'm not being conservative. Of course, not being conservative with Millville is getting one of those backs, Ennis or, or Amstead, on the end. You get them on you know, a little uh, pass to the outside or something like that, a screen pass. We haven't seen a screen pass. We saw one uh, uh, delay handoff, but that was about it. Over on the Atlantic City Electric scoreboard in Group 4, Shawnee 3, Hamilton nothing. That game is at half. We're a minute and five away from half here on first and ten. Roberto Rivera in a shotgun, and he fakes a handoff to Ennis. He gives it to Armstead. Armstead picks up about two. It'll be second down and eight with 55 seconds and counting on their own 39. Millville, it doesn't look like it's hurrying up here. No, so. that, I was thinking the exact same thing. It just seems like... Uh, they're just kind of hanging back. Tyler Donnie, who has scores from all over the place, coming up in about 30 seconds from now. As Ennis comes to the near side, he's trying to get out of bounds, and he does, and he gets across the 40, so he picks up a yard, but it's going to be third and five, so an odd set of plays here by Millville. They, didn't, they took the timeout, and then... I guess they figured, hey, if we get a nice long run, then we'll pump it up. But if we can't break one, we'll just go to the locker room happy. Yeah, and I would guess now <laughs> they'll run a play for sure because I don't think they're going to be putting his hands into the quarterback or putting his plays into the quarterback's hands. Got a couple scores and an update in Atlantic City coming up after this play on third and four. Rivera in a shotgun. He hands the ball off to Ennis. Ennis, and he doesn't even get back to the, or doesn't get a first down, so it's going to be fourth down now for Millville. Let's see if uh, M Williamstown calls timeout. Now Williamstown does call a timeout with 20 seconds to play. It's fourth and three, so Williamstown, I guess, figures, hey, they want to give us the ball back. We'll take a shot here, and although they, they did, don't throw the ball much either. They did get that wrong kickoff return, so maybe they're hoping for something to happen on a punt return. Cherokee leads Washington Township 37 to nothing in that game. The winner, uh, that's a group five game, the winner could potentially be a team uh, that plays uh, Millville or Williamstown here. And Atlantic City back on the board. Atlantic City leads Eastern 20 to 17 How in that, that one. Here it is 21 to 6 with 20 seconds left to play in the first half. We want to tell you Interstate Batteries is in Egg Harbor Township. They're in their the 10th largest in the country, bringing their excellent service to seven counties in South Jersey. They not only have the battery for your car, your boat, your RT, your RV, motorcycle, ATV, truck, power, chair, or golf cart, but their interstate batteries, replacement battery, is at 6064 Riga Avenue, Egg Harbor Township. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Call 646-5008. If you need a battery, you'll find them at Interstate Batteries. Test it and trust it. Van DeMarc boots one deep, no return for Williamstown, and the ball is rolling, and the clock is rolling, and they're going to touch it at the 10, and the clock will have 8.5 seconds left. So Williamstown really didn't have a return set up. They had two guys really shallow. Yeah, and their theory was we're going after the block. They had virtually everyone on the line of scrimmage, but actually Millville blocked it up pretty good, and he got the kickoff fairly easily, and this will be a kneel down for 8.5 seconds, I'm sure. So scores and highlights at the half with Tyler Donahue, the halftime show, and, of course, post-game coverage after this, 97.3 ESPN. We'll have all the newsmakers of the night on 
as Atlantic City has a lead tonight. And they take a knee, and that will do it for the first half. The Boardwalk Honda Game of the Week, produced by Prime Events on 97.3 ESPN-FM. Boardwalk Honda wants your car, and they're paying top dollar. Visit Boardwalk Honda. Dot com. So, Coach, we got uh, 21 to 6. Millville seems like they're in control. Yeah, the big play on the kick return was the kind of the offense for uh, Williamstown. Appreciate that. We'll give it back to you for the post game show with scores around the league coming up after this one. It's 21 to 6 here. Mike Gill and Jim Schaefer returns to the booth as we get ready to bring you the second half, Jim. And Millville will get the football back here to start the third quarter. And I'm sure in that halftime, their coaches were saying to them, look, this game's nothing to nothing. We're going to get the ball and at the start of the second half, and we want to take control right there and then. Conversely, Williamstown, who really has not been doing all that bad a job, it's just that if you make mistakes, when you have two running backs like Armstead and, uh, and Ennis, you're going to be in trouble. And good athletes make you miss as they do, and even though you're in good position, as Williamstown has been in a number of situations, Millville still makes something out of nothing. Millville will return, moving left to right. Millville again with orange pants, blue jerseys, and the white helmets with the bolts and the numerals on the helmet facing Williamstown with white pants, white jerseys, and a white and blue W in the form of the Wisconsin Badgers on the their helmets, they're moving right to left. Teeing the ball up at the 40. The clock still has a minute and 20 to count down here. But so both these teams are very anxious and willing to get this game started, but the clock must count down all the way to zeros I guess to get so. the second I, half I started. I was thinking the same thing. You mean to tell me they can't just stop it and start it again at, uh, at the proper time? You know. And well, I, somebody could have got a hot dog and said, hey, I thought there was going to be two minutes left. They started the game before I got back here. That could be. Vladimir Keenan set to kick off the second half for the Braves of Williamstown, the Thunderbolts of Millville. A half a football left for one of these teams in the NJSIAA playoffs. 21-6, Millville lead, set to take the football. Keenan swings his right leg through the football. It bounces at the 30, rolls up to the 20, picked up at the 20, and flipped backwards. At the 20, coming to the near side is... That's Ennis. I think it might have been Ennis, right? Coming to the near side. So they set a play up where Roberto Rivera picked it up and then pitched it backwards. And but that one didn't like do anything. He ran into the line of scrimmage and pitched it back. Only it was a kickoff. And they were hoping to use his speed to get to the outside. But actually, Williamstown did a good job of staying in their lanes and negated that kick return. So... Millville will turn, uh, start this series on their 21-yard line. First and 10 at the 21-yard line for the Thunderbolts. They sent Armstead in motion, and they hand it to him to the far side. Tries to get to the outside, and he is pulled down to the ground. A nice play defensively there on the far side of the field. Tyler Booth, TJ Booth they call him. And Chris Harris in, also in on that uh, tackle. Uh, but it, once again, Williamstown held its ground, and he wasn't able to make that first tackler miss. And therefore, uh, oh, I guess there was a penalty against Williamstown for something. I'd, face mask. The five-yard face mask to make it uh, f first down and 10 at the 29. So they pick up a first down on the face mask penalty. Rivera under center. They split Elijah Washington the near side, and Ennis carries the football up to about the 35-yard line, a pickup of about five on the play for Millville. If you can picture this, they almost had the two other running backs right behind the offensive line so that to give him a couple more blockers as he came firing ahead. So Ennis and Armstead doing damage so far. Second and five for the Thunderbolts on the 34. They break the huddle with two receivers to the near side. One split wide to the far side. They hand it to Ennis right up the middle, and he picks up about two on the play. There to make the stop for Williamstown is Austin Odd, one of the captains of this Braves defense. Yeah, uh... 
Austin Odd is a big fella. He just kind of almost stood up and took him in his gut on that play. Austin Odd, six foot, 225 pounds for Williamstown. A load. Third and one at the 38. Rivera under center. Stubbs the fullback. Ennis the tailback. Takes the handoff. Gets a first down and comes up short of the 45. A pickup of about five on the play and a first down for Millville. And they will continue this drive now at the 45-yard line. And you've heard this a million times. Speed kills. He actually was running ahead almost what looked like a dive play and then changed direction and went out to the outside and outsped his defenders to make that first down. First and 10, ball at the 45. Millville 21, Williamstown 6. The Thunderbolts with the lead and the ball. Rivera in a shotgun. Hands it to Ennis, who comes to the near side. Ennis breaking, or excuse me, Armstead. Armstead trying to get out of bounds, and he's pushed out of bounds, and he's going to lose about three or four yards, and now there's a late flag on the play. A flag on the Millville sideline, and Williamstown believes it is on Millville. They are kind of pushing, uh, indicating that it's going to go against Millville. I can't see what happened. The well, Millville players actually, are in front uh, of us. R Rivera got Armstead, kind of wrapped him up and took him out of bounds, and Armstead, just in a reaction, kind of pushed away, and that was enough for the uh, official to throw the flag. So they're going to go back 15 on the play. And that kills a nice drive. Millville was using up both time and uh, gaining first downs. Now that puts them in a deep, deep hole. Second and 29. Very deep hole. Ball at their own 26. Fakes a handoff to the motion man. Rivera over the middle. It's in and out of the hands of Jose Soto. And it's going to be third and 29 now. It was actually behind him, the pass, but it was a catchable ball. And actually, he also had uh, the uh, tight end, Chalky, wide open in the flat. Atlantic City was leading, last we heard. The winner of that game will face the winner of this game, where right now Millville leads it 21-6. to You can hear Atlantic City and Eastern with Tony Blum and former Eagle Barrett Brooks on sister station, 1450. Rivera in a shotgun, third and 29. He's just going to play it safe. He fakes the hand off the stubs. He keeps it himself, and Rivera crosses the 35. He gets out to the 40, and the ball goes loose. There's flags on the play, but the ball went forward, and, and who I has think, it? I think Williamstown. Looked to me like Williamstown dove right on the ball. There's a flag back at the 25-yard line, but the ball came out and was recovered at about the 42. So a lot going on here on that third and 29 play. Rivera put it into Stubbs and then pulled it out, kept it himself. Got big yardage on the play. We got holding on Millville, which is declined. And Millville recovered the football, but it will be fourth down here. Oh, how about that? I thought, it, boy, it looked like all white around Actually, the Actually, no. They did. The official held up his fist as if to indicate fourth down, but then he waved it off and pointed towards Williamstown, who recovered the fumble. So Williamstown declines the penalty, recovers the fumble, and they have it first and 10 at the 42. And did you that, see that? The official that held Banks up that fist. Is that Banks in there now? That is not Banks. That is Perkins. Oh, still, yes, it is. Still in at quarterback. Banks is gone with an injury. Perkins is in. And Williamstown moved. The whole right side of the line had all sorts of problems. It'll make it first and 15 at the 47. And I was just going to say that, boy, Williamstown needs to take advantage of this situation right now and get back in this ballgame. They trail 21 to 6. So they're actually, well, I guess eight points uh, if they get the two point conversions. First and 15. Perkins with Chamberlain in the backfield. He's been quiet. They send a man in motion to the near side. They hand it to the motion man coming to the near side, crossing the 45, up at the 40, cuts it back. Up to around the 35-yard line is Marcus Little. And Marquise Little gets good yardage on a first and 15. He gets to second and four, it looks like. Ball placed at the 36-yard line. So an 11-yard gain on the play. And, and he has speed. Elijah Martin... 
or excuse me, Washington came up on that play and had an angle and just missed the tackle. Second and four at the 36. Under nine minutes to play in the third quarter. Perkins sends a man in motion. They give it to Chamberlain off right tackle, 30 at the 25, up to about the 23-yard line, a first down, and Williamstown's on the move, their most impressive drive of the night. And the quarterback fakes the pitch out wide, takes a step towards the uh, running back, Chamberlain, hands in the ball, and a little trap pay up the middle, and it really picked up some nice yardage. And for the first time tonight, you can hear the Williamstown side making some noise. First and 10, ball to 23. Perkins under center. Looking over the Millville defense. He looks like he's calling an audible. Perkins. Takes the snap, hands it to Chamberlain. Chamberlain cuts it back, and he picks up about four on the play. Finally brought down by Ed Shockley. Well, obviously, this is four down territory, and, and Williamstown has decided we're going to grind it out here. And the, uh, the new quarterback, he's not a rookie, of course. Uh, Perkins really doing a nice job in there handling the ball. Perkins breaks the huddle on a second and three. A pickup of seven on that play. Boy, they get it to the far side, and Joe Early is pushed out of bounds. We'll see where they spot it. It's tough to see on that far side of the field. It's a first down, though. They did pick up the first. It's going to be first and goal inside the 10. They mark it at the 9. So first and goal for Williamstown, the deepest penetration of the night for the Braves. They had a kickoff return for a touchdown and not much else. They trail it 21-6 to with 7.46 to play in the half. Backup quarterback Isaiah Perkins in the game. Sends a man in motion. They fake it to the motion man. They give it to Chamberlain who's up the gut for a nine yard touchdown run. And boy I tell you it was a nice series of plays that their offensive coordinator called bringing that down. Had a lot of success running up the middle that they didn't have earlier in the ball game. Live video at 97.3 ESPN.com of this game. Thanks to Matt Ulmer from Ulmer's Appliance Service in Ocean City. And if you watch that drive, you saw perfection almost from the Williamstown. Great execution and a touchdown. They missed the extra point the first time. That's why it's 21-12. Keenan on to attempt the extra point this time. Spot kick up. Good. So with 7.35 to play here in the third quarter, we got a game, 21-13. Millville leads Williamstown. Vic Sub Shop, 742 Ohio Avenue, App Seekin, offers great quality and friendly service with all sandwiches available for pickup or delivery. Call 645-0500. Vix is open seven days a week until 8 on weeknights and 9.30 on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You can also visit Vic Sub Shop, Zion Road, EHC. Be sure to try Vic's special, a sub piled high with their special assortment of fresh meats and cheeses. Vic's Sub Shop, Ohio Avenue, in Apsekin. Golden Corral has all your home-style favorites from fried chicken, mashed potatoes, fresh-baked rolls, chocolate fountain flows all day. Hand-carved steak, now part of their daily dinner buffet. Make your food dreams come true at Golden Corral, Black Horse Pike, at the Shore Mall. 21-13, our score here in Millville tonight was 7.35. Did Williamstown just start to get some momentum? And they showed that they have a running attack too. Millville, it's been Millville, Millville, Millville with the running attack. And Williamstown, who is really sky high now, they're right back in this ballgame. Plenty of time left as we're only in the third quarter. So Keenan... With a low kick, it bounces, it hits off a Millville player's hand, and then it's taken at the 30-yard line. Boy, that very, could have been disaster. Very dangerous situation there. Once, you, Usually you instruct your special teamers, anybody up front, if it's over your head, you never try to make, you don't back up, you don't try and make a play on that. It's the guy behind you who's supposed to make the play. At that time, he tipped it, it went in the air, <laughs> Could have been a catastrophe for On the, the Atlantic City Electric scoreboard, Woodstown up 21 to nothing on Sterling in South Jersey Group 2. A lot going on tonight. Balls on the ground, a fumble, and picked up by Rivera. So things are just unraveling here. Yeah, Doug. 
Is that Doug Banks in on defense? It looks like Banks is back in the yeah. game on defense. Yeah, how about that? Is that is him so on defense. So they felt that they uh, were doing a little bit better with Perkins, and they kept him in. It wasn't the fact that Banks is on the sidelines. He just made that last tackle. Rivera in a shotgun. Second and 13 after the loss of three. Ball at the 27. 6.52 to play, third quarter. Rivera back to throw. He pumps. He's looking. Still looking. Plenty of time. Now he's going to shovel out of the pocket. Makes a move. To pass to 25. He gets back. I don't know that he got back to the line of scrimmage, though. Through the original line of scrimmage. He picked up about two. And it will be third and 12. Well, I don't know what that pattern were because two of the uh, receivers for the Thunderbolts were just kind of standing there, weren't making anything happen. By the way, on the Atlantic City Electric scoreboard, Hamilton with a Benjamin Bevin 13-yard run has a 7-3 lead over Shawnee late in the third quarter. So Hamilton now trying to hold on in their group four matchup in a shotgun. Third and 11, back to throw. Rivera, he's going to hold it himself now. And he falls forward up to the 35-yard line, a pickup of about five, but he's nowhere near a first down. And the momentum, it feels like it's shifted. You know, that was supposed to be a screen pass, but Williamstown just stayed with the receiver, and Rivera had no choice but to try and run that ball. Fourth down and five. Middle, uh, Millville will have to punt. Holy Spirit, a 41-0 leader tonight over Pingery in the non-public two. The punt bounces at the 40 and takes a roll back to the 30, and Millville will touch it up there. <coughs> and it'll be first and 10, Williamstown with 5.31 left to play in the third quarter. Another illustration of not fair catching that ball. That cost Williamstown about 10, 15 yards. So a three and out on Millville for Millville's offense. And here comes the Williamstown defense full of momentum right now. Or offense, I should say, full of momentum right now. And Moving right to left. Exactly right. And Millville has to buckle it up right now and shut that down. First and ten. Perkins under center. He hands it off a... It looks like Little has it. That looked like a broken play or some sort of misdirection or miscommunication in the backfield because that play was stuffed out nicely there as Millville. Boy, a lot of confusion on that. <laughs> that Rivera one. wasn't confused. <laughs> Kevon Rivera sniffed it out, and it's a loss of eight on the play. So that kind of simmers down the momentum for a second. Second and 18 ball at the 19 yard line. Under five minutes to play third quarter. Perkins. Now switching sides of the field is TJ Booth. He comes to the near side. They send a man in motion. They hand it to the motion man who hands it uh, to Early and Early it's knocked down. So a try of reverse on the play but a nice play by Ed Shockley. And I'll tell you, it looked like Millville knew the play. They had four defensive uh, players waiting for that double reverse. Third and 16, ball to 21. What a night with scores all over the place that you're going to want to stick around for the postgame show. Live video of this game at 97.3 ESPN.com. Perkins in a shotgun. Rolls to the near side, looking. Now he fires over the middle, and it is incomplete, broken up, and there's a flag. Rivera might have got there early. Marquise Little was the receiver. I'll tell you, I'd have to see that on instant replay because that was very close to being well-timed by Millville on that play. It just was bang, bang. Rivera was hitting Little just about the same time as that ball arrived. It, it was that close. It really was. Uh, I can't really say one way or another that they got the call right or wrong. I guess I'm okay with either way because yeah. it was that type of a play. But it looked like he timed it really well. And, of course, in high school, it's only marked off from the line of scrimmage. Third and 16, or third and one after the third and 16. A pickup of 15 on the play, and they give it to Chamberlain, who rumbles forward for a first down. And, boy, 
He ran right through a would-be Millville tackler who was Roberto Rivera. Yeah, I mean, he was hit. He had the first down but was hit right after that, and he powered through. That's what I mean. He lowers those pads, and he's driving forward. On the Atlantic City Electric scoreboard, Bridgeton 26-10. Capadonna Miller has two touchdowns. That would be an upset. Perkins hands to Little to the near side. Little cuts it up, and he is brought down. Nice play. It looks and like the Ryan Harris. side's very upset because there was movement on the part of uh, the wide receiver. And it was not caught. It's just nice play. It looked like Ryan. Or Dijon Brown, excuse me. Dijon Brown making the play. Perkins sends a man in motion. They hand it to Chamberlain off right tackle, and a host of Thunderbolts hold him up. They are short of the first down. That was a second and three play. It's going to be third and one. Hamilton leads in group four tonight. A 7-3 lead in the fourth. Ben Bevan with the go-ahead touchdown. This is a new Williamstown team here in the second half. They're firing off the ball, and right now they're beating uh, Millville at the line of scrimmage. This is a big play for Millville. Third and two. They moved it back a yard. Ball at the 47 and a timeout. Perkins saw something he didn't like, and he called a timeout. So with 2.35 left to play in the third quarter, Millville 21, Williamstown 13. You're listening to high school football on 97.3. ESPN. Signal Graphics, Tilton Road, Egg Harbor Township, your local commercial printer with a Millville personal. Millville is defensing those type of plays much better than they're defensing those traps up the middle. Yeah, the stretch plays to the near side and the far side. Nice play there. Second and 10, no gain on the play. Ball at the 15. Perkins under center. Perkins sends a man in motion, and somebody moved on the Williamstown line, and it's going to be walked back five. Yeah, Shockley uh, faking a blitz, and then he gets the attention because I'm sure the uh, players on Wash uh, Williamstown are much aware that Shockley is a big-time player. Second and 15 now, ball back to the 20-yard line. A minute 20 and counting. Here in the third quarter on 97.3 ESPN, Mike Hill and Jim Schaefer. It's the Boardwalk Honda Game of the Week, produced by Prime Events on 97.3. Play action. Perkins rolling. Pressured. He's going to throw it to the back of the end zone, and it is incomplete. Intended back there for Eric Cooney. Well, it's a pretty good job on the part of both sides. Perkins did a good job of uh, making a little bit of time. I think originally uh, he was thinking about running. Then he saw a white jersey down there in the end zone and uh, fired it in. But it was well defensed by, uh, by Melville. Third and 15. Under a minute to play here in the third. Ball at the 20. Perkins sends a man in motion. Pitches it to the motion man who was Cooney. Cooney trying to hit the corner, and there was really nowhere for him to go. Small pickup on the play. And it's now fourth down. Ball at the 12, so a pickup of three. Yeah, you just wonder. I don't know how strong I saw him kick an extra point, not too bad, but whether you go for three here. Because remember, even if they score a touchdown, they have to get a two-point conversion to take the lead. Looks but like they're, they're going to go for it. for it. Fourth and seven. Ball at the 12. Perkins to throw it. Plenty of time. Now he's flushed. He pops it up, and it is incomplete. Intended for Marquise Little. Little was open, but he was rushed. A pair of Thunderbolts putting some pressure on. Yeah, one of which was Obi Kali. And he uh, Edwards was in there also, and they were just right in the face of him. Not much room to make any kind of a play, and Melville will take over. After three, Holy Spirit up 48-0. 
No surprise. And Millville right up the middle for Armstead. Still going. First down. And that will be the final play, it appears, of this third quarter. A wild third quarter here at Wheaton Field in Millville. We've got the final quarter still to come with this game in the balance. Millville, 21. Williamstown, 13. This is high school football night on 97.3. ESPN FM. Choppies is even better online. You have probably 12 minutes to go in this ball game. Millville with a first and 10 on the ninth. No, I guess about the 18. No, 24. They give it to Ennis. Ennis sidesteps to tackle. He breaks a tackle. He comes to the 35 at the 40, and he's finally caught from behind right there at the 41 yard line. Mark Ellis caught Rob Ennis. Otherwise, it could have been six. And the play that ended the third quarter, Armstead, on his shoulders, just carried the team for a first down. And that was the same thing here. Not a great hole, but Ennis just refused to go down. Gain of 20 on the play. Back to Ennis, who gets... Taken down, maybe a gain of one. We'll see where they spot it. Second down and 10, it looks like. And you heard about John Chamberlain on offense. Well, that was him on defense. He just stopped them right in the hole. Second and 10, ball at the 41. Eleven oh five to play. We'll try to get an update on that Atlantic City game as well. Rivera fakes a pitch, keeps it himself up the middle to the 45, gain of about four on the play. And so I it'll be second and six. I think he was going to pitch that to Ennis, but he lost control of the ball, kept his wits about him, and ran ahead for a little bit of a gain. Flacco just throws a three-yard touchdown pass. For Eastern, they lead Atlantic City now 24 to 20. Here it's 21 to 13 with 10-26 to play in the football game. The winner will face Eastern or Atlantic High next week. Rivera in a shotgun, looking, firing, complete into the flat. And makes a move to the 50, first down, 45, out of bounds on the far side of the field. Catching the pass for Millville is Chris Harris. Boy, again, just a little hook pass out to the right-hand side. And he juked the, the first guy, ran ahead for that first down. Keeps the clock moving. First and 10 for Millville. 10.08 to play. You would think they'd be a, not in such a hurry. They have a... Eight-point lead. Rivera hands to Ennis. Ennis circles his way to the 40. Millville wants a flag. No yellow on the field. Second and five. Pickup of five. Ball at the 39. Yeah, just a little pushing and shoving. You're going to get that. By the way, Atlantic City fumbled, and that's how Eastern... Scored the touchdown. Inside Second and five. Ball at the 39-yard line. Rivera sends Armstead in motion. He fakes it to him. Then he gives to Ennis right up the middle. And Chamberlain just holding on to his ankles. Might have got a first down. We'll see the spot. He looks like he's short. Yeah, looks a little short. And actually... <laughs> Millville's not that concerned about it because they just want to keep moving the ball further. Now they have, really, they still have two downs to make this yard. Third and one, ball at the Williamstown 35. Under nine minutes to play. Watch the final nine minutes at 97.3 ESPN.com. Thanks to Matt Ulmer from Ulmer's Appliance Service. Rivera's going to take it himself. He pushes the pile forward, and he's got a first down. But as you pointed out, you would suspect at this stage of the game that Millville would be using at least the maximum number of seconds in that huddle and not be any 
and then in your hurry to get back to that line of scrimmage. And it does look like they are slowing it down a little bit. In that Atlantic City game, Flacco is now less than 90 yards. He'll be the first South Jersey, the second South Jersey player ever with 7,000 career passing yards. Here it's first and 10 at the 31 for Rivera. He looks over the Williamstown defense. He hands it to Ennis, who comes to the near side. He breaks to the outside. A flag on the play. Gets to the 35. Will pick up a four. We'll see what the flag is. It looks like a hold out in this wide receiver area. And Tyler Booth actually stripped the ball, but the blow was blown dead already. It is holding against Millville, and boy, that can be a big, big penalty penalty at this stage. And it was the, the wide out here too, and that's really where the play ended up happening because the receiver was holding the corner. Otherwise, that play might have been a loss. Mark Ellis made the stop. Williamstown is the defending Group 5 state champion. They beat Atlantic City last year. They beat Millville in this game en route. Millville looking for revenge tonight. They got here in a come-from-behind win over Hamilton last week. Hamilton trailing tonight to Shawnee. First and 13. Ball at the 35. Rivera in a shotgun. He's going to give it to Ennis. Ennis following his blockers, and he is taken down in the backfield. What a play by Eric Cooney, who sniffed it out and made a fantastic open field tackle. And he was just ready, Ennis I speak of, just ready to try to put a move on him, but Cooney would have no part of it as he... On the Atlantic City, the oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> On the Atlantic City Electric scoreboard, the defending Group Two champion West Deptford is trailing Haddingfield uh, 14 to nine in the third. Well, that's a new experience for them. Clyde Falsam, a mainland grad, is the head coach at West Deptford. Rivera in a shotgun. Sends a man in motion to the near side. Rivera's going to keep it himself right up the gut, and he goes down. It looks like Bending got him. Boy, when Bending, or excuse me, not Bending, Halloway, or Halloran, I should say, when Halloran gets his, pit, his mitts on you, you're not getting out. And he was being blocked at that time and still made the tackle. You know, I failed to mention before that the coach of, uh, of Williamstown is a former Hamilton ball player, Frank Fuchitola. Third and 13. Big play here. Ball at the 35 with 6.40 to play in the football game. Rivera in a shotgun. Back to throw. Looking. Pressure. Rolling to the near side. Pumps. Rolls out of the pressure. He's going to keep it himself and down he goes. He's tackled by Chamberlain and Banks, but he's short of a first down. It will be fourth down now. Ball at the 29. I, I don't think we're going to see them punting. Fourth and eight. I mean, what are you going to net here? Right. Do you throw the ball? Do you play it safe and just see if you can break one? No, I think they'll throw it. Millville's up 21-13 and driving, but it's fourth and eight at the 29. Rivera with an empty backfield. Four receivers to the far side of the field. Rivera fires, and it is... It is complete to Harris. Harris was on the ground. The official was waiting for him to get up. Boy, I tell you, they're, they're obviously their side doesn't uh, agree with it. But from our vantage point, it did look like he got his arms underneath the ball. I thought he caught it from where I was looking, but the official was waiting to see him get up. And Marquise Little slapping the ground in front of the official's face, not once but twice, indicating he thought the ball hit the turf. Now it's first and 10 at the 18-yard line. A pickup of 11 on the completion. Five and a half minutes to play in the game. Millville looking to advance. Rivera hands off to Ennis. Ennis back up the middle, and he gets up to about, it looks like, to about the 10. And I'll tell you, in a tight space, he's still jumping around in there, making something happen. Five minutes to play. It's been a long drive. Second and two, the pickup of eight. Ball at the 10. So Millville now has a chance to pick up one more first down, and then they'd have goal to go. Rivera in a pistol. 
Now he gets under center. Power eye. They give it to Armstead. Armstead cuts it up. Crosses to 10. Up to about the 5. First down yardage. It'll be first and goal for Millville. And now, boy, Williamstown really on their heels. He backs up against the wall. And Armstead once again showing a lot of power. You see, lowered those shoulders and just drove through those defenders for that first down. Inside of 4.30 to play in the ball game, Milva with the first and 10, first and goal on the five yard line. First and goal, they break the huddle. Rivera just staring at the defense, letting the clock run. If you look at the far official, he'll let you know when you're down to five seconds. They hand it to Ennis, who bounces to the outside, and he's short of the goal line. Tackle on the play on the far side of the field. Nice play before he got into the end zone because he did one of those McCoy moves where he just stops and then, boom, he bounces to the outside. But Austin Odd drug him down. It's going to be second and three or second down and goal from the two. And you're going to see a little bit of the same thing from now until this drive either ends or a turnover. A goal line stand going to be needed to save Williamstown's season. Rivera staring at the defense. Power eye formation. Gives it to Armstead. Armstead runs right into his center, and it's a Millville touchdown. He runs into the center and pushes him forward for a touchdown. Millville takes a two-score lead with 3.23 left to play in the football game, 27-13. to And now it looks like Millville can make this a real tough night for Williamstown with this extra point would make it a 28-13 game. That would mean they would need at least the two two-point conversions. And the kick and right is up. the middle. And it is good. So the score with 323 to play. The Millville High School Thunderbolts 28 and the Williamstown Braves, 13. East Coast Roofing knows how important your home is, and they personally guarantee to continue that same trust and service that they have been providing for more than 35 years. When you're ready for roofing, siding, or windows, call East Coast, 609-646-1444. Online at eastcoastroofing.com. United Rentals, the right tools and equipment for all your construction needs. United Rentals, 740 West Delilah Road, Pleasantville. UnitedRentals.com or 800 U R Rents. Calvi Electric has been proudly serving South Jersey for over 100 years. Whether it's a major electrical overhaul or just a hard-to-reach light bulb, call Calvi Electric 345-0151. And for over 40 years, Capri Pizza and Grill has been your favorite pizzeria and now a new location. They're improved on everything that made them the best. You'll remember them from the Shore Mall. Come see your owner Rocco at Capri's new location, 900 Tilton Road in Northfield. Capri is home of the world's best pizza. Come see why. Capri Pizza and Grill, 900 Tilton Road, Northfield. Rocco's there now. Why aren't you? I was there today. He got my business today. You know, there were uh, unsportsmanlike conduct against both teams. I don't know whether something was just language used or something, but... And it was negated anyhow. On the Atlantic City Electric scoreboard in a minute. Ground ball kick picked up at the 25, at the 30. The 35, 40, 45 out to around the 50 is John Chamberlain. And John Chamberlain stood there and waited for something to open up and then sped forward for a very nice gain. On the Atlantic City Electric scoreboard, Top seeded Eastern is trailing Atlantic City 26 24. Dennis White just recovered a fumble for the Vikings. And eight seeded Atlantic City is leading top seed Eastern. Wow, what an upset that would be. Here it's 28 13 with 316 to play. The four seed over the five. Millville leads Williamstown. Perkins to throw over the middle, and it is complete. Complete and caught by Early. 
at the 35-yard line. He's pushed back a couple of yards. We'll see where forward progress is stopped with 3.07 to play in the game. Williamstown realizes they need to throw, and they're in the no huddle. Perkins calling out the plays. He's in at quarterback. First and 10 at the 36, waiting for the player to get off the field. He is. Perkins in a shotgun, looking, firing, complete. Complete to Little, and Little still on his feet. Broke a tackle out to the 25-yard line, a pickup of 11. Yeah, he just ran right out of the tackle of Woody. And um, obviously, Williamstown hasn't given up. They're coming right back. It's a timeout on the field. Officials time. So it's first and 10, a pickup of 11 on the completed pass. Oh, they're checking for a first down. Once again, on the Atlantic City Electric scoreboard, Atlantic City recovered a fumble and leads Eastern 24 or 26 to 24. That's the most up-to-date score we have on that one. And, and just of course, to up update you here: two minutes and 40 seconds to play in a ball game. And it's Millville 28 to 13, and Williamstown has taken the kickoff and now is down to the little less than a 25 yard line and about six inches to go for a first down. So the pickup was about nine and a half. Wow. So Armstead just scored a touchdown, and it looked like all was good in Millville, and now Williamstown comes f right back down the field. You wonder if they've been throwing the football this successful, why don't they use the pass a little bit more? Yeah, and, and the play before this, it was nothing fancy. Four men ran ups, and he just picked the guy who was open. Williamstown back on the ball. Second and one, ball at the 25. 2.40 to play in the game. And really, the Williamstown season. Williamstown. The five seed from the West Jersey Football League taking on the Cape Atlantic League's Millville, the four seed. Perkins sends a man in motion. They're going to play for the first down here with Chamberlain. He gets a first down. Up the middle, still on his feet. At the 15-yard line, up to about the 13. A pickup of 12 on the play and a Williamstown first down. The clock will stop as they reset the chains. Again, Chamberlain waiting for that line to open up the hole, then going forward for a big gain. I believe Williamstown has two timeouts left. Perkins throws, fires, complete, and Booth has it, and T.J. Booth fumbled the football. Booth fumbled the football. Uh, I think they're going to call an incompletion. They are. I see the official on the far side now waving his hands incomplete. Many people in front of us here look like the ball did come out, but that's because he didn't make a football move. Yeah, and actually, it was a great play by the defensive back, too, coming up and making that hit and forcing that incompletion. That's a th far throw, too, by Perkins. The ball is placed on the Millville hash. He threw it all the way over to the Williamstown hash. Perkins on second and 10. And he hands it off to Little. Little with a little running room, and Little is going to go in. Ooh, he's just short of the end zone. He had a clear path, but it was closed off nicely on the far side of the field. He's pushed out of bounds there by Ennis, and it looks like it's going to be first and goal at the one. And, boy, Little showed some speed there. There were Millville players just kind of reaching as far as they could, and he was running past them, as Mike pointed out, looking for that end zone, but just negated about a yard short. We have a final in group four, Hamilton goes down tonight. A missed field goal by Padovati. And here on first and goal, it is a Williamstown touchdown as John Chamberlain goes one yard for a plunge. And we have a 28 to 19 game. And we've told you, if they score, they're going to have to get one of these two-point conversions. We'll see what they do here. Once again, Padovati misses a late field goal and Hamilton goes down in group four. Chamberlain with a one yard touchdown run makes it 28 19 here. Watch the live video at 97.3 ESPN.com. Thanks to Matt Ulmer from Matt Ulmer's Appliance Service. 
They're going for two. Double reverse, and it's sniffed out. What a play. Kevon Rivera steps in there and makes the hit, and it's going to be a 28 to 19. And it makes it a two-score ball game, really makes, I'm sure you're gonna see an onside kick. I just wanted to bring up one point about uh, the Hamilton kicker, who is a pretty good kicker. Yes. Has three field goals already this year. Really a tough way to go down. Of course, did it say how long a field goal it was? 42 yards, That's wide cool. right. That's a tough break there for Williamstown. Would you have gone for the two there? Well, it really doesn't. You have to make the two. Sometimes, <laughs> I mean, he didn't do it the last time. You wonder why he did it this time because it isn't going to make any difference. It, it takes a little bit away from the pressure on Millville, I think. Right, 28-19. You're not know, basically the pressure's out because you know if they have to score twice again. Right. And that's why you're going to see an onside kick. They kick the extra point there. It's an eight-point game, and then they have to go for two if they were to score again. Right. Williamstown has but it's two only, timeouts. It's only one touchdown that you have to score. That's true. It's the Boardwalk Honda Game of the Week produced by Prime Events. On 97.3 ESPN, connect with Brian Brumell and the sales staff at Boardwalk Honda on Facebook. 28-19. An onside kick. They are setting up for that. Keenan. Approaches. And Keenan kicks it low. It rolls. It's on the ground. And Millville is on top of it at the 45-yard line. That's where they'll get the football back. And not a great onside kick. Generally, you want it bouncing a couple times and then taking that high bounce in the air. You've got to kick the ball on the top of the ball. And didn't seem like uh, he did a very good job of that. First and 10 for Millville. Of course, they'll stretch out this last two minutes. They do, as Mike pointed out, have two times out. Two timeouts, and I'm sure they're going to use them. Rivera hands to Ennis. Ennis up the middle, pick up about three. One of the guys in on the stop, Dylan Hammond. And uh, Williamstown uses one of its last two timeouts. Bridgeton 34, Cinnamons in 18. There's a lot of time left in that game, though, but Bridgeton comfortably in the lead. So a six beating a three in group two. We've seen Hamilton go down tonight. And the last we saw in Atlantic City, they were still leading Eastern. We'll try to get you updated on that one. When you're faced with a civil trial case like personal injury, employment discrimination, or negligence, you need the right lawyer to represent you. Make the right call. Goldenberg Mackler, locations Atlantic City, Northfield, Rio Grande, Vineland. 609-344-7131, online at gmslaw.com. Harbor Pines Golf Club, Egg Harbor Township. Championship golf, extraordinary course conditions, member options for every type of golfer. Go to harborpines.com. Bellevue Tavern, Main Street, Cape May. Great food, great times at the Bellevue. Enjoy all the games along with their signature burgers, colossal salads, great local seafood. Visit us on the web at bellevuetavern.com. Second and seven. They give it to first down yardage for Ennis. He's at the 30, up to the 25. A pickup of 23, and that seals it. And boy, I tell you, he really turned on the afterburners when he hit that line of scrimmage. He saw a hole, and he wasn't going to be denied. By the way, I didn't forget to check for Tyler Donahue at the Bellevue three times a week. <laughs> West Defford still losing to Haddonfield. They haven't lost since September 2011. They're down 21 to 9 as we speak. Wow. This game will require a couple of handoffs, and Ennis takes the handoff. He backpedals and then goes back forward. Again, it was a great play on the part of the uh, Williamstown defender who broke through from his linebacker spot, uh, Woody Blitzing, and got in there, and, and I think it stunned Ennis that someone was there so quickly. You'll never believe what just happened in the Atlantic City game. We'll tell you right after this play. Atlantic City and Eastern are playing tonight a 1-8 matchup. 
This game has under a minute to play. Rivera. Hands it to Armstead. Armstead runs into one of his own players. He's still on his feet. Bending just kind of grabbing his jersey saying, hey, buddy, I'm trying to keep you up here. Hey, probably <laughs> was enough. Uh, I guess maybe they're not going to use that last time. Out on the Atlantic City Electric scoreboard, Eastern has gotten a safety, and now the score is 26 to 26. Unbelievable. Well, Millville's going to come home with a victory here, 28-19. Williamstown, the Group 5 state champion, no longer. They go down tonight as Rivera takes the final snap. He hands to Armstead, who comes to the near side at the 20, and he is knocked out of bounds. And that means there is going to be one more play because three seconds are still on the clock. But... That'll just be for statistical purposes as this game is in the books. Millville is going to advance who they will play. Check out 1450 WPG with Tony Blum and Super Bowl champion Barrett Brooks. They have the call of that game over on WPG Talk Radio 1450 right now. And if you want to keep it on the postgame show, Tyler Donahue will have that score Right up till 10 o'clock tonight. He's got scores and reaction from around the Cape Atlantic League. And Rivera looking at the clock. He's waiting, waiting, and he takes the knee. And that will do it. Millville wins it tonight. The final score at Wheaton Field. Millville 28, Williamstown 19. And depending on what happens at Eastern tonight, It'll either be Millville Eastern or Millville Atlantic City next week. And, of course, all the local fans would love to see a Millville Atlantic Millville City. And, uh, Coach, first off, congratulations. And, uh, you know, they beat you pretty good last year. Was that, was that kind of the theme of practice this week? Yeah, you know, we reminded them about, you know, 41 to 6 quite a bit throughout the course of the week. And we know it's two different teams and we have a different group. But our guys responded really well to uh, some adversity throughout the game and continued to battle back and make plays. I'm re really proud of our guys for that. It looked like the momentum was shifted in the third. What? What? How did you stop it from changing? Because they got a, you know, they had a chance to score there, and you held them in that uh, inside the red zone there. What kind of happened that flipped it back your way? I, I just think our guys made some plays. You know, Coach Balmani made some great calls defensively, our defensive coordinator, uh, to get us into some stuff to slow down what they were trying to do. So he deserves a lot of credit for that. And um, you know, we just we just found a way to get a stop. Uh, now. Offensively, you guys ran the ball really well, and it looked like you guys were going to, it was going to be a kind of a shootout on your end. You guys looked like you were moving up and down the field. They slowed you down there a little bit. What did they do to kind of control you? Well, they're very well coached. You know, they have a good team, and they did a great job of blitzing us at certain times. And, you know, it seemed like a lot of the new stuff we put in was a little bit more effective. So you could tell they did a great job of scouting the stuff that we had in earlier in the year. So um, they deserve a lot of credit for that. But finally, our backs got it going a little bit later on. With uh, Armstead kind of emerging the last couple of weeks, how much have you had to kind of change things up to make sure that he gets some touches and Rob still gets his touches? Yeah, we just, we just package things to make sure that, you know, there's times where they each get a rest and the other guy's in there, and then we have some stuff with both of them in the game at the same time. Um, so it's been a challenge for us. We've had a lot, of, a lot of hours in the coach's office working on that, but that's a great thing to have. You know, we're, we're excited about it, and, and both of those guys are going to be big down the stretch. Were you surprised they went for two when they scored? They moved the ball right down the field on you. Were you surprised they went for the two? I was very surprised, actually. I was I was very surprised, and, you know, one of my guys up top was saying, you know, they're going to go for two, and, and I didn't think they were. And, you know, I was even considering calling a timeout down there to get our defense set once we saw it, but we decided to let it roll, and uh, our defense stepped up big. Uh, what does this mean, you know, uh, that a couple of years ago, no one even talked about Millville football in, in any stretch of playoffs at all. For you guys to get a win over the defending Group 5 champions, how far has this program come? Well, I, what we try to preach with our guys is about being consistent and working hard every single day, and the rest of it takes care of itself, and, and it really does. And, you know, our guys have, have bought into the program over the last several years, and, and it's shown. You know, we have, we've had four playoff, straight playoff appearances, and, and uh, you know, we're just we're missing getting all the way through. So we're really working on that goal this year, I hope. Well, last we checked, Eastern was up 32-26. Atlantic City, uh, you know, depending on who you get in that game, what is going to be what you want to work on for next week? Well, both of those teams are, are spread style of offenses, and they throw the ball around the field a lot. So that, that's one of the things we're going to have to take into consideration. And we're going to have to execute on offense and make sure we get points because obviously by the score of their game, you can tell that, that they can score. So we're going to have to find a way to make sure that we can match that. All right, Coach, congratulations. Great. Thank you so much.